Hi guys. Today we are driving through kind of the Greer Taylors area. What you're seeing right now is we have um, a cancer center and then also the Pelham Road uh, Medical Center. So you've got hospital campuses all throughout this part of Greer. Now, if you were to look at a map of Greer, I think it's very deceiving uh, because you don't actually notice where Greer is. Um, so Greer is this long, skinny place uh, that on a map, you're going to see it as, you know, Greer and you anticipate it being this like center of like, you can drop a radius. What Greer is actually long and skinny is we are down almost in Spartanburg County. Um, and then like we cross over the interstate here, uh, and we're going to let the large truck here figure out where he's going first um where Greer starts is it starts on the other side of 85 um down in kind of Spartanburg County ish uh but then it also runs all the way up to and like touches the Blue Ridge Mountains right around Lake Robinson so that's what we're gonna drive today and definitely like you're gonna want to stick around towards the end because I'm gonna show you the most requested neighborhoods in the area at the end of the video. Uh, so if that's what you're here for, if that would, that's what you would like to see, awesome. So, okay, so with this, you're coming into the area, you might be driving into town, that's cool. You're definitely gonna end up on 85, which is what we just drove over. Uh, but I'm gonna take you and actually go, let's go look at the airport. So I know that uh, you guys are um, coming into town. So what better way to kind of show you, okay, this is one of the back ways um, into the airport. I'm not gonna take you through the craziness of um, off the interstate. Uh, but one of the things that GSP is the airport that you wanna fly into if you can, uh, is a lot more parking lots, um, this is a less busy time of day, of course, uh, but I figured we'll just go take a drive through where you are, where you're actually coming into town. Um, and so you've got your rental, rental car places. Um, I've actually found that the app, uh, the Turo app is really beneficial for renting cars. Um, it's easy, uh, it's cost effective, and it's kind of like Airbnb for rentals. So for car rentals, which is great. It's called Turo. So y'all that are relocating from California, direct flight from LA, that's super cool. Um, it's like a, what, five, six hour flight.
All right, so they're doing a lot of renovation work here at GSP. Uh, the fountains are always cool. Ooh, wow, I can't even. So whenever you come in, you're going to see a lot of, um, man. All right, let's do this. So we're just going to go this way and that way. Lots of renovation work going on here, y'all. Fun story. My husband's grandfather actually helped design this airport way back in the day. So this is the airport you're going to and you're going to fly in. Um, you can easily get an Uber or, um, you know, again, like I said, rent a car. It's not too terribly hard to get around. And if you're local or again, looking to rent a car, not hard, not take too crazy busy. Usually this airport, um, like, it's not like the Orlando airport where you need to show up, like, two, three hours before your flight because the lines are so long. Um, this airport, you can show up. I mean, if it's middle of the day, you can show up, you know, 45 minutes before your flight <laughs> and easily get checked in, go through TSA, everything. Um, if it's more of the heavier travel seasons, yeah, you're going to want to get here an hour and a half before I don't think I've ever come in for a flight a full two hours before, um, like they recommend. So, yeah, so this is a lot of your starts to getting here to Greenville. Welcome. This is not a bad view. You can see the interstate from here and a bunch of businesses back in here, but this will actually take you down towards Pelham Road where a lot of grocery stores and things to do. Top Golf is down there.
Oh, and there's horse properties out here too. So that's what's on either side of us right now. Just got some horse property. So these are definitely some older homes, but this area you've got homes that are being renovated, homes that have been built within the last 20 years. Uh, really nice neighborhoods, established, um, green space, they've got community pools, um, everything. All right, so we're gonna go through Riverwood Farm. Oh, nope, they put a gate up. Not going through Riverwood Farm. We're going to go through somewhere else. So this is Chartwell Estates. And this style community is really cool because it has both townhomes and single family homes. So it's a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger of a neighborhood. And this is like, this is really typical of your HOA style neighborhoods. Um, just gonna show you the different style of houses. Uh, these homes, I would say, are probably in your upper two hundreds into your mid three hundred thousands. Um, there is a part of this neighborhood that is newer as well, so we'll go drive that. So here's something else that I would say, like noticing about this neighborhood is, is good. So you're going to have a, a slight HOA in a neighborhood like this, but if you notice, like the mailboxes are not all the same exactly. Um, they have different styles, different colors, everything. Now we are, now we're driving into what a newer part of the neighborhood. So these houses, believe these houses were all built by SK. Um, so definitely you're gonna get some really big houses. Then you're also gonna get another style house that like, so one car, two car, three car garages um, houses that are 1600 square feet all the way up to houses that are probably closer to 24 to 2800 square feet. Um, what I'm seeing though here is there's a lot more single family, one story houses, um, than like your older homes that are a little bit just not as thought through, I think, for neighborhoods. It's nice to find neighborhoods like this because they do have the, um, more of the, just more options. The price is gonna be nicer too. And here's kind of the townhome section of 
this neighborhood, which is really nice. A little bit more strict, higher HOA costs. Um, and townhomes, they're great if you don't want the yard work, if you don't want to be completely responsible for like the upkeep of the outside of the house. Shelburne Farms. Slightly older, not terrible. Oh yeah, so this neighborhood has sidewalks, playground. I don't remember, I think it does have a yeah, it has a community pool. Um, these homes were built early 2000s. So 2000 to 2010. Shown a lot of these houses. I've helped clients buy these houses. Back when they were buying these houses, they would sell for like 180, 210. Now these would these are gonna sell for like mid 300s all day long. There's a slight HOA in this neighborhood, but if you notice, there's different types of mailboxes. Um, it's kind of the telltale sign that the HOA is not as strict as some others because there's pros and cons to HOAs. There, you know, pro is, you know, you don't get people that are going to trash their yard. Um, not going to have a bunch of janky cars sitting around or anything like that cutting their grass, which HOAs are all starting to get super busy. <laughs> My mom actually just got a HOA letter <laughs> that she needs to power wash her house and stain her front deck. And if that's not the type of neighborhood you want to live in, then just be aware. Haha. <laughs> so these trees are crepe myrtles and the little white flowers will go everywhere here in like the next week and they produce a ton of pollen and they smell really bad. And these yard sizes are probably maybe a quarter of an acre or smaller. So you're not getting a big yard here.
man, I remember whenever this neighborhood got built. All right, so this neighborhood is Suddeth Farms. Uh, looks like it was built, the style is like Ryan Holmes. So, DR or DRB. Uh, these are definitely like your larger family homes built within the last 10 years. Like them, they've got the brick or stone fronts, um, the siding is all hardy board siding. You're not going to see the vinyl siding. Price range in here is definitely going to be four to five hundred thousand based on location. So probably whenever these houses were built, they were, I would say, in the three hundreds. But now, after COVID and so on and so forth, um, prices have gone up. There's a house for sale. Cool can't tell what the house number is, but there's a house for sale inside of farms. It's also, you can tell it's a newer, newer community. None of these houses have mailboxes at the end of their driveway. Um, so something, somebody made a rule or some like regulation on um, mail stops that like you have to have a community mailbox. Also, that's a really good, um, thing to see is people out walking, uh, in the neighborhood. It's a great sign. Also a great way to know people, get to know people. So Super Road is going to be a really great, um, like, main road to get you to the even, like, to, the, to your main thoroughfares. So it's going to get you to Wade Hampton, basically. But Super Road, I feel like, cuts um, gr right between, it's the line between Greer and Taylor's. So I do remember when everything over to our left was just trees. And it's crazy whenever it got started getting all built up. So um, one thing to know about this area specifically and why it's getting all built up to begin with is um, Greer is where the inland port is. So there's a lot of business out here, a lot of industry out here. Um, and so what is an inland port? So if you know what a, a port city is, um, more on the coast, uh, where boats come in and, and so on, there's actually, it's more of a, it's just inland. Um, so trucks and trains, uh, that's what is running here in the area. Um, you also like Greer is a little bit of an older area as well. Um, so we're going to drive through some of the older parts of Greer. 
Um, and that's what you get whenever you're wanting the walkability. You're either going to see condos, townhomes, or the single family homes are older, or maybe they were torn down for a new home to be built. Um, so you're gonna see a lot more mill houses, uh, but definitely good things to note. All right, so we're definitely in like an older part of Greer City right now. Um, so you have like newer homes that have been built. You have older Southern style homes um, that have the big wraparound porches. Um, like these homes through here are all at least 50 years old, minimum. Um, they've been renovated. They've been, um, some of them have just, been upkept. Uh, these homes are going to, depending on their upkeep, some of these homes are going to be high of 100. Some of them could be as high as you know, 400,000 because they've been completely renovated. Uh, but the cool thing is you do have the walkability. So where we're driving right now, um, and then like one thing to note is like right here's railroad tracks. Um, so for the inland port, but we are actually coming right up upon the Main Street or Trade Street Greer. So if you're looking for things to do, uh, wanting to go out one night, this is a great, like, this is an awesome place to come in the evening because these lights are all, um, all lit up. They closed down Trade Street and like all of these, a lot of these businesses stay open, which is super cool. Uh, favorite restaurant down here is probably Select, which I think is just really, really good. So yeah, there's a, you can get walkable to downtown Greer. for y'all that are like moving with um family and you're looking for a good uh doctor's office right down here to the left is cornerstone family medicine and the that's dr stafford and it's he's very sought after so um i know he doesn't have a ton of room for new patients but if you can get in you should
So because Greer is becoming a more popular place, they actually just built up this parking garage over here and there's condos down here and there's a Hampton Inn right here. So if you don't want to stay downtown uh, Greenville, you don't have to. Uh, there are some really great places to stay in Greer. Very walkable whenever you get down in this area. So the older, larger estate homes over here on this side of Greer are going probably anywhere from seven, eight hundred thousand plus, um, because you're finding that some of them have been turned into businesses. If they haven't been turned into businesses, they're a large family home, or maybe they've been completely updated. And the big thing here in the draw is that you can walk out your front door onto a sidewalk and go downtown. So there's definitely some older homes. If you're going into an older home that doesn't have the um, updates to it, then yeah, you might find something around four or 500,000. Now this is what people moved Greer for, is if you look out in the distance and you see the mountains, that's why people like you end up looking in Greer at some point because you can actually find a mountain view up here. All right, so the road in front of us right now is Wade Hampton Boulevard. You can take Wade Hampton from downtown Greenville and take Wade Hampton and go all the way up into Spartanburg without ever having to hop on an actual interstate. So, um, Wade Hampton's also called Highway 29, um, and you'll find everything on it. Grocery shopping, Hobby Lobby, Target, because that's actually what's important, um, and your car dealerships, uh, doctor's offices, um, do you name it, you'll find it. Good local businesses, pharmacies, um, yeah, everything. So we're actually, this area has a mill, actually, an old mill up here. Um, and older area, definitely. Um, if you find some newer construction up here in the area, it's been built all within the last 10 years. Um, you're going to find lots of... Um, more established neighborhoods, definitely. Um, things get a little bit more spread out. So it's probably going to take you, so if you end up living up in this area, um, it's going to take you probably 10 to 20 minutes to get to your grocery stores, get to your shopping. Um, there might be a random Dollar General somewhere, <laughs> um, but they are building more. You're going to, there's more townhomes that they're, um, we just passed some duplexes. Um, 
find that they've built those up definitely more here in the last five years. Uh, so that's something to watch out for. Um, and I mean, you can tell an area is a little bit older because you also have the power lines that are still, they're not buried. So that's one thing to uh, be aware of. Um, we also get, you can find land up here. Um, it is more uh, spread out, definitely. All right. And you also end up with some areas with less restrictions. So when you find areas that do have less restrictions, it's not a bad thing, um, but you'll find that the housing and the neighborhoods are, um, you'll find more modular homes, mobile homes, um, neighborhoods are um, just a little older. The newer neighborhoods all, like in order to even build in an area, the builder has to pull and create restrictions. Okay, so ultimately it may not be a, um, a neighborhood that's going to have, you know, a huge HOA or a bad HOA necessarily, but it is going to have one. See, townhomes everywhere within the last five years. They're great if you are a first time buyer or if you're just somebody who doesn't want to take care of a yard. That's fine too. I want to go right here. Sure. Let's go. Let's do it. So we did just pass Greer High School. Uh, so if you've got kids, it's very good to know that this is up and over here. Uh, it's very important. Okay, so we're actually gonna let's see here. Can I get? Oh yes, we're gonna do this. We're gonna go drive Brookside Farms. So Brookside Farms is up here. I mean, walkable to the high school. Uh, built by D.R. Horton. So a nice big neighborhood. Um. you get to kind of notice the different styles of houses. Um, these new construction neighborhoods are really great because you usually can get a house in here for, uh, I would say like threes, three hundred thousands, uh, without too much of a hard time. Um, obviously they're still building in here. So if you want to, you know, go the ground up, you can. Um, now there are higher tension lines, like power lines over here. So if you don't want to be near that, I would suggest going a little bit further out. Um, I know that that um, multiple, there's a available house with a nice brick front and everything. Cool. Um, Let's see here. Let's see if we can get up over there. So if you come to the area and, oh, yeah, we can get up over there. Um, and you're like, Aubrey, I want to go visit some of these neighborhoods. I want to go drive them. Like plan on renting a car whenever you get here. I think it's important to drive around. You're going to get to see the style of house that you like, the style of house you don't like. Um, I also be relatively careful in these new neighborhoods. Um, you don't want to get the uh, like super steep driveways that tend to happen. Oh, these houses have a phenomenal view. Um, we'll drive back down this way. So I am actually going to turn around here because we are not doing that. I like my tires. 
All right. So turning around right here, hopefully you can see it. But the mountains, like this is what we're looking for. Love it. So we've driven some new construction, some older homes, um, driven you through kind of the downtown of Greer, lots of different things to offer. Um, again, here's the high school and from what I've been told and what the uh, internet says is that Greer has a really good school rating. So if I'm wrong, go and or right, I don't know. Um, that's what I've been told. And yeah, check it out. Right here's Greer Middle. So great place to live if you've got kids. Like schools are right here together. It means you're not going from one side of town to the other side of town to pick up and drop off kiddos. So this area, like you'll start seeing the names of everything changing to more Blue Ridge instead of Greer. Um, it's one of those areas that people say, oh, I live up a, in the Blue Ridge area. And there's like no address for Blue Ridge, South Carolina. Um, if anything, you'll have a Greer address or a Greenville address. You'll be in the county. Um, you might even end up more Spartanburg County. Um, you'll end up being in like the Lyman, Duncan, Inman area, even the further north you go, which those are great areas. Um, but this is like when people tell me I want space, I want land, or I want to be, I don't want to be in the hustle and bustle of everything. I don't want a ton of traffic. This is a great place to be. Um, and as you can tell, we've gone from one side of Greer to the other side of Greer. Um, and we've been driving for, you know, it, if we didn't go throughout all the neighborhoods and everything, uh, it would probably be
All right, so we're gonna randomly go drive this neighborhood because, yes, it's called Timber Glen. Oh yes. So y'all that want something that's maybe newer um, and you want larger yards, we're gonna go down this way because I see a house for sale. Um, these yards are at least half an acre, minimum, which I think is fantastic. Um, so this house here, let's see here, 205. Oh, and then there's one right next door as well that's for sale. 205 and 207. If the power lines don't bother you, and they're on a cul-de-sac, that's awesome. These houses are every bit of 400,000, in, in three to 400,000, um, even upwards for the bigger ones. Um, you know, 420, I would guess. Ah, okay. So this is O'Neill Church Road, I think. And this will take us to the neighborhood that I get asked about the most. So a lot of times people come through and you're like, Aubrey, we want to be in a community where we can get to know people and we can... Um, you know, walkability, everything. Well, this is probably one of the cooler neighborhoods in Greer. Um, I'm not going to take us through that entrance. I think we're going to, eh, we'll go that, that way. Um, so off of O'Neill Church Road, we are going into O'Neill Village. Um, O'Neill Village is a master plan community. Um, and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Okay. All right. So these master plan communities are popping up all over the upstate. Um, O'Neill Village was definitely one of the uh, first, so if you'll see here, you have businesses um, within uh, this community. So you have small um, restaurants, coffee shop, so on. Uh, there's also, there are apartments, condos. These townhomes have been here for, goodness, five, eight years. Um then here is, you have the community pool down there. Also on the first level, there is a, a gym. Uh, there's a church. Uh, sidewalks on both sides. And sold that house too. <laughs> you know you're a realtor if I sold that house and I sold that house down there. Um, Place. So these homes, uh, so this community has a couple different builders in the community. Um, another reason this is called a master plan community as well is it has a dog park in the community, which is super great, uh, nice and established. Um, and then you'll see like here's the community mailboxes. So nobody has a mailbox here. It's all kind of post office box style. Um, but in this neighborhood, um, you have, uh, DRB, SK, Lennar, 
and um, Toll House Brothers or Toll Brothers, Toll House <laughs> cookies. Um, so you do have Toll Brothers uh, and they all have a similar style build. Um, you're going to have I lots in here are about a quarter of an acre, maybe upwards of a third of an acre. Um, I love these homes because you get some of the really bright colors. Um, so there's blue houses and red houses, green houses. Uh, then you have white houses. Um, just some like this house here is one of my favorites because it has a bright yellow door. Um, and it's just, yeah. So there's also do do do. Again, the walkability, you have more townhomes here. They're scattered throughout uh, this neighborhood. You're gonna have um, just uh, modern houses, like more, of, you know, black and white. And uh, yeah, I, I love it. Uh, there's also these up here. So definitely more of what I would call a Charleston style because the houses have the front porches and these homes in here are going anywhere from as low as like 300,000 to as much as like seven, 800,000 for the larger homes. So definitely like new construction is, is important to, to note, but then also see that these homes have, some of these homes have been here a while. So upwards of the, you know, five to 10 years at this point, um, they are part of Greer city limits. So this neighborhood, you'll end up with a little bit of a um, more expensive tax bill, uh, to be completely honest with you. Um, but you can kind of tell the, the homes that have been here longer as well. So yeah, good to know. And a lot of people want to live here. Beautiful homes. If this was helpful for you, and I plan on doing many more just like this, um, go watch our other video of just driving downtown Greenville, the good, the bad, the ugly. Reach out to the team, give us a call, shoot us an email, go in through our website, um, and would love to help find your next home and maybe even sell your current home. Uh, we have a network all over the country and would love to uh, coordinate that with you. And um, also if you're local, that's what we do. We know this area better than anybody else. Subscribe to the channel because we are putting out content all the time. There's so many options out here in Greer. We didn't even cover half, I think, of what we could uh, because there's also areas like Thornblade, which is a huge community um, of the Greer Taylors area. Maybe we'll do a video someday of like gated communities, but go check out the other driving videos, Pelham Road, and uh, I'll catch you next time.